Hi, I am Dr. Amitabh Banerjee, author of COVID-19 Pandemic a Third Eye. I have started this book reading and trying to explain some of the concepts in each chapter. Today, uh, we will be discussing the fourth chapter in this book. The title is What Evolutionary Biology Tells Us About Coronavirus Mutants. The gist of the chapter is that most mutations have no impact on virulence or infectivity. Viruses which kill also perish with the host. Strains that survive are not lethal. This follows uh, Darwin's law of natural selection. That uh, basically biological systems, pathogens, viruses, parasites, they follow the principle of live and let live. If they are very virulent, it becomes a dead end because they perish with the host, the person whom they infect. And th these type of strains which have more virulence do not circulate further. So they die out in a natural selection. And those only go far and survive, which will cause very mild disease or very mild infection. Yeah. And so that the person who gets infected moves around, spreads the infection, and it is beneficial for survival of the virus as well as the person. So there is a sort of a symbiotic relationship. So by and large, mutations, they adjust themselves. And this chapter was written when there was a lot of panic around the Omicron and subsequent variants. Uh, so uh, my idea was that, and as per the Darwin's law, Omicron was not causing any severe disease. It wasn't causing hospitalization. So it was perfectly following Darwin's law. But uh, surprisingly, the scientific community did not uh, give much weight to this. And a uh, lot of uh, panic was there and subsequent waves were anticipated. So I started with a chapter. Sometimes uh, people who are not scientists or who are not uh, perhaps uh, working in ivory towers, they have better wisdom. So in that context, uh, I have started the chapter with a statement, a former chief minister of an Indian state got into trouble when he remarked, coronaviruses also have a right to live. He was trolled heavily on social media. So he was very near the mark when he said that uh, they also have to live because the, as I had also mentioned in earlier chapters, the world experts, they wanted to just eradicate coronaviruses. So he had better wisdom in saying that it is difficult to eradicate and they also will adapt. I mean, perhaps he meant it un unwittingly. So I have uh, then given reference of uh, book, which is quite a path-breaking book and which insightful book. That is uh, David Dutes in his provocative book, The Beginning of Infinity, states that when we seek explanations, we lean towards anthropocentrism. Anthropocentrism. Anthro means humans. We look everything from the human perspective as if other beings are do not matter in the scheme of things. So we lean towards anthropocentrism, explaining things parochially from the human perspective. To balance this is anti-anthropocentrism, epitomized by the principle of mediocrity, which assumes that there is nothing significant about humans in the cosmic scheme of things. What he is trying to say that we are part of an ecological system and there ultimately has to be a balance. We cannot say that only we have the right to survive and we can eliminate all viruses. And of course, this is a philosophical thing and one does not know whether the former chief minister had read this book. Politicians have little time for reading, but he had a point, perhaps unknowingly. So sometimes an uncluttered mind of a lay person 
gives us more insight than the, the most educated people. And this pandemic has time and again reinforced this thesis. The pandemic driven by anthropocentrism. So that's what I said ki in this pandemic we were driven like David Dukes said, by anthropocentrism, as we are the center of the universe and only we can survive and others we will eliminate. The pandemic became protracted because this uh, chasing the virus at all cost, it was like a elephant chasing the cat and falling off the cliff. What promised to be a sprint turned out to be a marathon. Did we take the right path? And being in sprint mode, did we go too far in the wrong direction in this cross-country race? Did chasing the virus at all costs turn into a prestige issue for world governments and their scientific advisors, an extreme form of anthropocentrism? The strategy of lockdowns, physical distancing and school closures which became a recurrent strategy was based on a computer simulation project on control of influenza pandemics by a high school student. I think I have mentioned this earlier. Daughter of an American scientist similarly studied on hamsters on benefit of mask, guided mask mandates. Con subsequently, Danish randomized trial on mask and later a study from Bangladesh were inconclusive. However, the guidelines regarding masks continued to get more stringent from single mask to double mask as the pandemic progressed. The one single theme in the pandemic was fear is the key. Citizens of almost all countries, including major democracies, co complied with measures which deprived them of their fundamental rights, driven by the common denominator of panic. A major contributor to the pandemic of panic were the draconian measures which has no precedence in the history of public health. I am repeating the same themes again and again because public memory is short and uh, there is every chance that again we may repeat again the world governments and the WHO and other bodies will again repeat the same measures and this time with a uh, legal decree as the pandemic treaty and amendments to the international health regulations are around the corner. So, and people may again go into fear and panic. The purpose of these communications are to make the people aware, empowered, so that they do not panic and blindly comply without asking the right questions, without asking for right justification. Protecting number of uh, projecting projecting number of cases and deaths of one disease out of context can easily generate panic in the population. So it's very easy to generate panic if you just get you can create mass obsessive compulsive disorder, mass obsession with one disease and panic. This has never been done for any disease ever. There are so many communicable diseases, far more lethality. This resulted in mass obsessive compulsive disorder around one disease. Everything about the novel disease assumed larger than life dimensions. In the initial days, it was transmission from surfaces, which was later discarded, thankfully. People were told not to touch files. People were told not to touch the newspapers. Newspapers uh, discontinued. My brother was in government service, railways, he said he, there were office orders that when a file comes, don't touch the file for one week. I told him, as it is government servants, do not touch the file for one month. So what is the big deal? But whatever it is, jokes apart, these were the written instructions which were coming. And this aggravated the panic. Later, there were reports that airborne particles or nuclear can be carried up to 10 meters, cause for further panic. Conveniently overlooking that within the radius, there may be millions of microbes surrounding us in addition to the billions within us. So we are full of surrounded inside, outside by different microbes. You can't catch, pick up any one thing from thin air or from inside any corner of your body, gut, skin, nose, and you can create panic that this is a microbe, this can cause disease. Most of the microbes which we are carrying and commensals as uh, normal 
inside our skin and all, most of them have a potential to cause disease, just like the coronavirus, perhaps more severe than the coronavirus. We have never done in history from throat or pneumococcal can, any staphylococcal can be picked up from the nose. So we are surrounded inside, outside by micro. The latest agenda for mass history are media reports of mutant variants. As I said, this column was written and the mutants were coming out, Omicron and then some Dota Omicrons. The latest agenda for mass history are media reports of mutant variants of the novel coronavirus. Popular perception would be that mutants generate monsters, almost as if they are getting monsters from mutants. Evolutionary biology tells us otherwise. So there I have stressed that according to Darwin's law of survival, the dangerous mutants will die out. Coming back to the foxbox of the former chief minister, viruses also have a right to live. Whether we like it or not, nature grants them a fair chance. To survive, they follow nature's way of adaptation, Darwin's law. These adaptations are by way of mutations, natural phenomena, not new, due to errors during replication. It's a number of copies, you take out some odd error can occur, and occasionally due to selection pressure. According to principles of successful parasitism, this adaptation is beneficial to both the virus and humans. Errors that make the virus fittest for survival propagate while others lose out due to natural selection. Lethal or virulent strains do not go far. Viruses which kill perish with the host, leading to a dead end infection. Lesser virulent ones which do not kill but cause symptoms will also phase out because of self-isolation. Even those who cause symptoms because people are so much educated now, aware that they will isolate and not. And the mutant strains which will survive and go far will be the less virulent strains which do not kill the host, produce very mild symptoms or none at all. People infected with such mild variants will mix with others and transmit widely. High contagiousness does not translate to high virulence. Such strains promote population immunity with minimum casualty. So, as I said earlier also, Omicron was doing exactly that. Number of cases, it was almost like nature's vaccine. How does mutation take place? The novel coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 is an RNA virus which has about 30,000 base pairs of nitrogen compounds, about 3,000 to 4,000 are in the spike proteins. These base pairs can be considered to be the building blocks of the virus. Addition, deletion or changes in sequence within these building bricks lead to mutation. The building blocks are there, comprised of nitrogen compounds, just like bricks make a wall. What can be the implications of mutation? There are a number of possibilities. Most mutations have no impact on virulence and infection. Maximum mutations, thousands of mutations take place continuously. But most of them do not have any adverse events or even good or bad. They use as fingerprints for tracing the path of outbreaks. Some mutations uh, will become less virulent but more infective with better chances of survival and propagation by law of natural selection. And rarely they may be become more virulent, which such outliers would also lose the evolutionary race. Those mutants which become virulent will itself die out because it will die with the host, like a suicide bomber. The following are the concerns related to mutations. What are the concerns which are, maybe some of them may be genuine. Will vaccines work against mutations? Will immunity obtained after recovery from natural infection work? Will RT-PCR detect the mutant variants? Antibodies and immune cells generated by natural infections on vaccination act on some of the building blocks known as epitopes. As mentioned, the novel coronavirus has about 30,000 base pairs of building blocks of nitrogen compounds. During mutations, only a few of the building blocks undergo change. So antibodies and immune cells primed against the whole virus as on recovery from natural infection or immunization by vaccine derived from the whole virus have very good chance of neutralizing this variant. So that is why natural infection is stronger because the immune system has seen all the 30,000 breaks epitopes, whereas the spike generated by the vaccine are only 5,000, 10,000 breaks it has seen. So if there are mutations in that, there are more chances of evasion than if the 30,000 are seen. 
Some vaccines target only the spike proteins or more specifically few of the building blocks in them. These targets are known as epitopes out of the 3,000-4,000 of these base pairs in the spike protein. If mutation occurs in an epitope in the spike protein, there is slightly more chance of antibodies and immune cells hitting a blank on a mutated epitope. However, as many epitopes are involved in the process, such vaccines will also confer some protection against the mutants. The RT-PCR test which uh, targets a number of epitopes will also detect uh, the variant. So I was of the opinion from this. Of course, as events unfolded, there may be some other reasons when vaccine efficiency went down. But if uh, by heart, by speculation, there was chances that, of course, uh, that uh, if vaccines which are uh, based on the spike, eliciting the spike protein, more chances of evasion from vaccine than natural infection, which again, the events as they are unfolded, it established that. It should also be somewhat reassuring that due to principles of evolutionary bi biology, mutants which will dominate at the population level in the long run will be less virulent. And we to this day also we are seeing a few months back, there was again a threat uh, of a panic that there is a new variant in Singapore and in Bombay and Maharashtra flirt, but nothing happened. Not even a ripple. This is the way of all pandemics. Over time, they become seasonal minor illnesses. The concept is summed up in a dialogue from a popular Hindi movie, Agnipath. There is a dialogue I have used. Those who can understand Hindi will appreciate. Apna usul kaita hai jab dusman ki umar bad jai, to usse dosti karlo, apni umar bad jati hai. Translated in English, my principle is when the life of your enemy increases, then befriend him. It increases your life also. So this is what is Darwin's law, live and let live, symbiosis and adaptation. And uh, I have made an author's note. I have simplified it a lot for lay understanding because uh, ignorance and uh, some sort of uh, mutations, uh, the term jargons, people can get, uh, you know, monsters will come from mutants. So I have simplified it in very uh, easy terms. So authors note many technical concepts and terms have been simplified for better understanding of a larger audience. And uh, surprisingly, just uh, and recently, I don't know when this uh, all this discussion of, was taking place, uh, Darwin's law has been removed from the syllabus. I don't know whether it is still removed or it was just a suggestion. So it is a matter of concern that if we remove from school education or college education these uh, basic principles of biology, future generations will face more panic. And uh, so this is all I had to say in this chapter to ratio that uh, mutations do not uh, produce monsters, but more often than not, they are produce milder variants. Uh, so it is something like a dynasty which gets uh, weaker over time. So even the Corona, King Corona's dynasty also has become weaker over time. So this all I had to convey in this chapter. Thank you.